everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike here, the DRF race of the day for Wednesday, February the 21st. Race number nine at Tampa Bay Downs. We're going a mile on the turf. These are three-year-old $20,000 claimers, basically a non-winners at two life. As we take a look at this field, it is a big one. 10 in the body of the race, 11 through 13, entered main track only. Luda body, the number four is in from the fairgrounds, Mike, off a couple of solid buyer speed figures. I guess he fits pretty well here, Dan. It feels like this is probably at least slight class relief for him, and I, I like his running style for this race. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector because you want to have tactical speed, and you see that Lou the body can sit fourth a couple of lengths off the lead in a situation that might favor front runners. The two jiggery pokery should show speed. This horse is stretching out around two turns for the first time, but late night living is somewhat interesting. Dropping in class, stretching out, he might find a nice spot at a decent price. We'll see what he can work out from, from the far outside poster deck, because that's really the main impediment to him here, it feels like. Um, in each of his prior two starts, he was also drawn way outside and just couldn't really get position. Maybe it'll work better for him this time. I can, I'm can. i going to fade the number one noble wave in here, Mike. Uh, this is a horse who failed to win at the Meadowlands last year and then was very, very disappointing at Laurel. He shows up at Gulfstream on the synthetic. He's 1-20 to in a $35,000 maiden claimer. Well, he won like a 1-20 to shot. First time against winners, it didn't work out. It's class relief. He fits. He has the tactical speed to work out a pace tracking ground saving trip. Just never been a fan of this horse. Me either. He's hard to trust. We'll, we'll just put it that way. Um, we'll see what kind of price he goes off at. I, I'll i say this about it. His, I know that he won on the all-weather. He's better on turf. He bred to be a turf horse. His turf races are way better than his all-weather races. He was just really, really green. As I remember him at, at Saratoga and then at Monmouth, those first two routes, like, boy, was he green in those races. Like, he had no idea what he was doing. He just may not be any good, Dan. Um, I don't know. This is a good spot for him. I would say four to one's a fair price if you could get it. I don't know if you're going to get it. And he was green at the Meadowlands as well. I know the favorite won that race. He made a menacing four wide bid into contention on the second turn. It took him forever to change leads. And you can argue if he did sooner, he would have won that race. Jiggery Pokery is the number two. Not only is he stretching out around two turns for the first time, he'll be racing on turf for the first time. He's by Frosted. I'm not a fan of Frosted, but there is some turf on the bottom of this pedigree. He's a half to a useful mid-level claimer in the Mid-Atlantic named Princess Javancia. The second dam was a group three turf sprinter overseas. Yeah, there's there's plenty of uh, turf pedigree here, at least on the bottom, Dan. Um, it's all about, um, first of all, what kind of trip he gets in here and that pace projector is favorable for him if he can make the early lead. And then it just how much better on turf is he going to be than he is on dirt? Because he's obviously got to be better on the surface. Moving from Gulfstream to Tampa Bay at two starts back, the three sheer delight was bet to favoritism for his turf debut in a $32,000 maiden claimer. And he caught a field without much pace. He finished evenly that day in a race that was won by a sharp horse. They ran him on dirt last time out and he got the job done in a $15,000 maiden claimer. Back to turf. He's going to be a price. He's got upside. I, he does. And we'll see if he's a turf horse because that's what he's really got to prove. To me, he's bred to be a dirt horse. And, and that's, to me, the reason they improved last time when they switched services with him. I, I didn't like his only turf start at all. Lou the Body comes in from the fairgrounds as your morning line favorite for trainer Larry Ravelli. Last time out, he was wired by an odds-on favorite. They ran 1-2 all the way around, and this horse did make a pretty solid wide move on the turn into contention, and then just as quickly, he flattened out in the stretch. He seems like a nice fit at this class level. I'm not sure he has such an edge over this field that I'd take a very short price. I agree with all that stuff. I mean, he's probably going to be the favorite, I guess. I don't know if I would bet him at any kind of a short price. His last start was fine. His turf debut two back when he won he got a perfect trip uh, but he did win that race pretty convincingly the five pirate radio moves back to turf for a red hot barn jose d'angelo winning at 30 percent at the current tampa bay downs meet this horse started his career on the grass at colonial last year has been campaigning on the synthetic down at gulfstream park recently his last race again a race where he was kind of held up behind a slow pace maybe getting back to turf helps him out right now i think he's the same horse turf for synth I, I do too, um, but I don't mind them switching back to the surface with him. And I also just sort of felt like maybe this is a race where you get a little bit more speed out of him. He wasn't showing any speed uh, really in those synthetic races, but he did show speed on turf to begin his career. I, I suspect they might try to go forward with him in the end.
The number six, the honey man, was dismissed at a big price for his turf debut two starts back. And all in all, I didn't think he ran badly. He was sort of outside of the back of the pack. He stayed in. He was over in behind horses in the stretch. And he was running on at the end of that race with a decent enough gallop out. And the winner of that race somewhat flattered the form when running second to the $32,000 starter with a 68 buyer. They ran him on dirt last time out. I don't know if that's his surface, although he has run well on the surface in the past. I think he's in sneaky good form but he just needs pace he does we'll we'll see i i feel like there's a better trip coming for him this time though than he got in the only turf start yet i mean another he had an outside post that day so they just sort of took him back they don't have to ride him that way in here and i think based on some of his other races he's not a super slow horse really i think there could be a better trip coming this time and he ran fine he was a huge price in that turf debut he ran fine that day Aloha Man is getting back to his winning surface. The number seven scored two starts back in a $32,000 maiden claimer at Tampa Bay. And Aloha Man showed good tactical speed in this race. He's going to get to the outside in the stretch. And he's going to beat three next out winners. The third place horse would come back to win against maiden specials with a 57 buyer. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do with this horse, actually, Dan. His two turf routes are okay. This is the win. I don't know. I wasn't blown away by it. I guess you could just say he did what he had to do. Another horse, I thought he got a great trip in this race and he worked really hard to get by. That horse that, that he was doing with at the stretch, it was a huge long shot and he had to really work to get by him. I don't know, man. I, I, I wasn't sold on him yet. Um, I'll wait and see what kind of price he is. But he does seem somewhat tactical and he really has stepped forward since stretching out around two turns. Jailhouse Justice is up next. He made a really nice impression in his final start as a two-year-old, graduating in his first start for a tag and his first start at Tampa Bay Downs. This horse is loose on the lead. He's got a long way to come, Jailhouse Justice, and it's not like this pace is fast. They almost went a half in 50, and Jailhouse Justice is still going to run over him to beat a couple of next out winners. Yeah, exactly. He had a lot of ground to make up here, and it's not like he just gets there. I mean, he runs this horse over, and he's the only one who's getting to this horse at the end of the race. So I, I was I liked this performance, Dan, his, only, his turf debut, two back. They wanted to lead with him. That pace was fast. They did not back off it, um, and he wound up contesting it for a long way, and he was still racing on. I thought that was an underrated performance as well. And in the race we just saw, he bested a couple of next out winners. The fourth place horse came back to win for 32 with a 57 buyer. Noble Star is up next. He graduated in his most recent start for $16,000 at Tampa Bay Downs. I thought he got a good setup against a pretty bad field, Mike. So he's got some things to prove to me stepping up in class. I, I'm going to agree with that. I also just feel like the the way I looked at him, Dan, is this race that we're watching right here, and I did think he did some good things in here and ran well. This was the time to have him at 15 to 1 because his only prior turf start was the Jailhouse Justice race we just watched, and he wasn't going to win there, but he got caught over behind horses in the stretch, and he was going to be closer at the end there. Both of his turf races are pretty good. I mean, I, I could use him again. I feel like last time was the time to have him. He felt handsome in blinkers, however. Maybe he's just turning it around with the new eyewear. Late Night Living is the number 10, and I think he's a fair price at 6-1 to one on the morning line. I know he went on dirt two starts back, but that last race, we mentioned that this race is basically restricted to non-winners of two life. He was in against several two-time winners in that race. He had an outside post position. He made up a little bit of late ground at the end. I'd like to see what he can do against lesser competition with a forward trip, and that's what he's getting here. We'll see what kind of – that's the, the main issue, I think, Dan, is what kind of trip will he get? Because, again, in both of his turf starts, he's been outside, and the trips haven't worked out. And either of them, it's certainly a better spot than the last one. The only other turf race that made in 32 – um, where he was behind Aloha, man. Man, he just got caught on the outside all the way. Could never get over. Lost a lot of ground. That's not my favorite race. I don't love that race overall, but I would give this horse the benefit of the doubt. 11 through 13 entered main track only, so we'll focus on the turf horses in our Wednesday race of the day. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. Another edition of Derby Watch drops on Wednesday. Brad Free and David Aragona. Top pick time for the Wednesday race of the day. Mike, you're going with Jailhouse Justice, and why not? That was a very strong kick. Hey, we didn't even mention he's getting Lasix for the first time. They're true. I just like the spot for him. I like his effort last time. I think the uh, the prior turf effort against Maiden Special Weight Company is an underrated performance, and it's a race that shows that he has speed, Dan. Don't be surprised if this horse is on the lead.
I like the honey man getting back to grass. I like him dropping in class off his only turf start, and I like the way he finished in his turf debut. And better yet, he has a low-profile jockey aboard, which means he's got to be a big price in here. He's 10 to 1 on the morning line, and I'm hoping he can kick late and outrun those odds. 8194 for Mike, 64108 for me in our Wednesday DRF race of the day. It is the ninth at Tampa Bay Downs. Best of luck.